Hi, my name's Ronnie Whitehorse. I'm one of the nurses here. I'm the manager of disease control and prevention. So I'm supposed to tell you a little bit about myself. I am Danette Urban. I was uh, born to the uh, Black Sheep Clan for the Edge of Water Clan which would mean something to Navajos, probably not a lot to anybody else. Um, I've been a nurse for oh, a long time. I've been here for 15 years, and um, I'm grateful that um, I was a recipient of the IHS scholarship and got my nursing degree through that. I came to this clinic, um, actually when I, interviewed for this job, I really wasn't expecting to get it. I was just doing it because I thought I needed interview experience. So the medical director at the time, Dr. Clout, he said, well, why don't you just put in your resume? And I said, you mean my resume with nothing on it? <laughs> and uh, he said, sure. So I did and I got interviewed and I was, I was, um, blessed with this job and I've been here I've been um, progressing with the clinic we started out with a smaller patient base mainly natives uh, some non-natives and after that after a few years the clinic grew and included more non-natives but we tried to keep our native spirit alive here as much as we possibly could there have been many, many, many changes since then. So, you know, we kind of like, I've managed to roll with most of them and uh, try to keep things flowing as best as I can. Let's see, what else about me? I'm a grandma. I have two granddaughters. Uh, both of them live in Annapolis. My uh, son-in-law was is retired Navy and my daughter is a cardiovascular tech in Annapolis. So she and I talk a lot of shop <laughs> when we get on these conversations, although I'm not as well-versed in cardiac function as she is. She kind of keeps me on my toes. So that's kind of good. I also um, take care of my mother and uh, my sister also lives with me. And it's a good thing because, you know, we're both, we're all elders now, and none of us are alone. So we kind of all take care of each other at this point. Do you have any hobbies? I sew. I love to sew. Uh -huh. It just takes me out of everything, you know, that the stress of being, you know, working and taking care of a, um, an elder and uh, another elder who, you know, it's just, just as good. I like to, uh, I like to sew regalia. I don't get to sew a whole lot of it. I like to pull fringe for shawls. I like to make masks right now. So it's a, it's a good tension reliever for me. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, kind of self-care. Yeah, that's my self-care. I like to walk. But unfortunately, I broke my toe a couple weeks ago. So I'm not. I'm not walking anywhere for a while. Well, good. Well, thank you for that. Um, my next question is, what do you see in the future of the clinic you work at here? Well, I've seen this place grow a lot. And, you know, people come and go and changes. And right now I see that, you know, we're kind of struggling through some growing pains. But... I think that, you know, we're, we're progressing to a good place. You know, we're trying to expand the services of the, uh, uh, the clinic. And um, some of the things we're doing are, you know, a year or two ago, we would not have thought, of, thought that we would be doing this. Like the COVID testing and the outreach. The outreach has changed a lot since Christine Romero came on board. And I'm grateful for her because she's also a sister and uh, she helps me um, to think about other things.
that mm -hmm. we can do to and, and and since she is a you know has worked at other places she knows a lot about you know how things are done there that she can bring that to us and as well as the other nurses here too we're around a lot of good people here we are we have a, we're surrounded by a lot of good people here mm -hmm. yeah Okay, so um, we'll go into favorite pastime. Your favorite thing or pastime story or, uh, or to do this holiday season or past seasons. You know, you might have sort of a pastime or something you love to do over the holidays. When we were kids, you know, one of the joys of Christmas, of course, is writing all the packages under mm -hmm. the tree. And part of it, and as I got older, and my daughter and all the nieces and nephews, we were gathered for the holidays. There was, um, we wrapped presents, you know, and just made it really festive. And the bows and the different wrapping paper and the different sizes of packages. That was exciting. Yeah. Now we don't do that anymore because everybody wants Amazon cards. <laughs> or Target or and, and really it, it's easier that way mm -hmm. but I think we lost the, a chunk of festivity that way mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah so I think for the holidays decorating for Christmas is really um, fun yeah. it adds a lot of spirit to the holiday even though I mean if even if you don't have a lot of money you know, just putting a tree up and putting things around, candles, and that really lifts people's spirits. Yeah. Really and church, you know, and, mm -hmm. and singing Christmas carols, that adds a lot. You know, listening yeah. to Christmas carols, I think that takes a lot of the stress off of the bad things that could be happening, yeah. especially yeah. now with people out of money and out of maybe no jobs and food. It's it's pretty um, it's pretty dismal in a lot of places right now. So you know, Christmas carols hopefully will bring us all up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, this will be the last question. Tell us what you are grateful or thankful for to be at work or at home. And it's open to what you want to express, you know, especially during the time of COVID too, you know, what, what are you thankful for? Wow, we'll be here for an hour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for home. I'm grateful for my family. You know, it's, there's, um, there's a lot to be appreciated from being from a big family. I had, well, I had five brothers, I only have four now. Mm. But I had five brothers and uh, two other sisters. And at the time, you know, when you're going through all of that, you know, craziness with the kids and, you know, they're running mm -hmm. around and you're all picking on each other and everything. It, it wasn't, um, I didn't see it as such a blessing, but now that we're older, yeah. we're, we're it, you know? So um, we don't have as large a family here anymore my um where my aunts and my mother and you know that generation they had a lot of children you know usually like five was a small mm -hmm. we don't have those families like that anymore and i think that um there's not the big community of cousins now that there was when um, we we were growing mm -hmm. up. We don't help each other. We can't help each other out as much. Most of us have moved away into, you know, my daughter lives in Annapolis. My niece, she lives in Kansas. My other family's still on the res. You wow. know, my brother lives in Los Angeles. So we're not, you know, so such a tight-knit community anymore. And that's kind of sad. But um, the other thing I'm grateful for is I'm grateful for you guys. You know, say this for you without getting too weepy here. Um, I, came, I came to be a nurse 
And uh, because I wanted to work with Native people. I wanted to be Native, native nurse for Native yeah. people. And um, you guys, you and the Youth Center and everything, that you have these, these outreach things going out to our community. Yeah. And that's so important. And um, although I'm not, or I haven't really been able to participate as much in these outreach projects as maybe I'd like to, because that's where we're at, yeah. you know. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for you guys. You know, I think that you, um, you just make this place better. You make it fun. You know, I can go over there and it's like, oh, wow, what are you working on? You know? <laughs> And it makes it so much more fun here than being in a clinic. And um, one of the best things I like to do while I'm here is I like to work with patients. That's my, uh, the thing I enjoy the most is even if it's giving just a flu shot or bandaging a wound or talking to somebody to help them to understand what's going on with their care. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is the yeah. best thing that I could do in this place. Mm -hmm. And information is good for people who are trying to understand what they're going Exactly. Through. That's what I feel that, you know, my role is to, mm -hmm. you know, okay, it, what do you understand and how can I make, you know, how can I help you here? If I have to make some phone calls to help somebody get their um, referral placed mm -hmm. or, you know, if they don't understand their medicine, if they're, um, you know, maybe they can't get here, maybe I can refer them to Dan. Dan and I can collaborate and figure out what can we do here. Yeah. Or even help Christine deliver package, food packages to an elder that yeah. is out of their, you know, they, their, their area that lives further, say, south. I can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I enjoy. Well, that's great. I appreciate we appreciate we appreciate everything you do too. You know, we we we're um, we're blessed to have you, or actually just to be working with you. I met you, you know, coming here and a long uh, time nice. ago. Yeah, and I even think that my dad might have known your dad. Yeah. Back at the Indian Resource Center in oh, Los Angeles, okay. because yeah. he was one of those um, Indians who was relocated, mm. and we, you know, I grew up in L.A. Yeah. So, and I know he went through there. I remember gatherings way back down there on uh, downtown. Yeah. You know, yeah. The first day, my dad called it the first Indian Center. It was, <laughs> and it was just Indians, yeah. you know? We would sit there, my dad would be singing at the drum, and mm -hmm. you know, there would be uh, stew and fry bread, and you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those I remember days. those days. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if we have any Comments or questions? We love and miss you, Ronnie, Karen, the Crane. What advice does Ronnie have for someone who is interested in becoming a nurse? Oh my gosh. I suggest that they start working on all the prereqs first. You know, get that English out of the way, get that math up to speed. Start getting yourself in a good place mm -hmm. with your education. Do the writing classes, do those things that, um, the biology, the things that you have to do which don't run out. Do all that stuff first. Then start on the prereqs, you know, the chemistry, the microbiology, the physiology, the organic chemistry if you're going for the university. Start working on that and do get, get tutoring. If you don't understand what's going on, don't wait. Get your tutoring early because it's, it's hard to catch up. If you start falling behind in a class, all of a sudden things go black. It's hard to get caught up. And, you, and if you have to repeat a class, don't worry about it. Just do it. Just go back. Maybe work with somebody who, um, uh, get a buddy, you know, and do it again if you have to. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know, start doing your little checklist, check yeah. off of the classes, concentrate on those classes that you need, and then go to nursing school. Yeah. 
be a lot easier when you get in. You yeah. Get in the job. No, and if job. you can get the IHS scholarship, all the better. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Okay. Well, um, that's about. That's what we call a wrap. Um, okay. It's, um, I want to thank you again for your time and, and for all you do. Like I said, you do a lot here, and uh, we appreciate you. And um, we look forward to some good holidays and some good changes here, like I like we talked about. And um, we'll, uh, we'll uh, wish you and your family uh, a great week and, and a good holiday. And hopefully, we can do this again sometime. And you too. Yeah. Okay. You. All right. <laughs> Thank you.